Hi, this is Kat. In this video, I'm going to talk about EQ2's housing system. So this is going to be an overview. We're going to cover the basics, but we'll probably also get into some more advanced tips, and hopefully this will help out a lot of the new and returning players to the game. So for new Lemmy tunes or for new players, the very first time you take your character to either Freeport or Kinos, you're going to get a quest that pops up automatically just for entering the zone. And it's a housing quest, and it, it's going to direct you to the the main inn for that area. So for Kinos, it's going to be the Lion's Main Inn, and for Freeport, it's going to be where I'm at right now. It's the, the Jade Tiger's Den. So it's basically wanting you, you don't have to rent an apartment at this point, but they do want you to visit one of the housing areas. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you guys here in Freeport. I'm going to come into this area. Now all these rooms right here, you see how it pops up the little icon of the house? These are all instance housing zones. So there are different layouts. Um, that you can pick from and it doesn't really matter which one you want to look at for the the quest I don't believe or it might say in the description but if all you want to do is check it out or if you want to do some tours of the area before you actually make make a purchase feel free to do that it's very easy um, if you uh, left click here it pops up you know what room you want to do you can click on it you can access it and this will give you the purchase option but if you just want to do a tour if you just want to look at it you want to right click on your mouse and this gives you different options then you can choose to access it and this will be if you've already bought and you've already paid rent on a place um, you can enter your own um, your zone but if you want to tour something or if you want to visit another player's home so a lot of times people will put chest uh, sales crates into their apartment so that you can go in there and buy stuff without having to pay broker fees so this is what you want to do for say a visit or if you just want to check out a friend's place that has it really nicely decorated you can do that too um, but if we just want to tour the basic unfurnished apartment what you're going to do is click tour and then it'll pop up the different instances. Now, um, not every instance is going to have multiple versions, but the ones here in the end usually do, just because there's more options. And it's just the layout of the apartment. Um, it'll still have the same number of rooms. So if I want to go visit the basic room, number one, then I'll just click on tour. It'll zone me in. And a lot of these apartments, um, in the ends and both Freeport and Kinos are a bit dingy and kind of dirty looking uh, but you can change that through decorating and different options one of the cool things about um, the homes in Freeport and Kinos is they actually do give you some options to change like your floor and ceilings okay so here I am just taking a tour and I can look at the different rooms that they have. This is just the two bedroom apartment. And this is the real kind of basic, um, no frills apartment here. And then when I wanna leave, I just click back on the door and it'll zone me back into the room I just was. All right, so if I want to visit someone again, I'll right click, I'll click visit, and I'll have to know which room they're in but then it'll pop up a list of everyone who owns an apartment there and then I can click on and enter anyone that I want to visit. So if I want to buy this, all I have to do is click, which room do I want? I'm just gonna pick the first one here and it's gonna tell me that my price is zero. I don't need any upfront cash. Um, some of the nicer homes in different parts of Freeport I will need to pay an upfront. It's usually a couple gold. Um, a lot for maybe a, a brand new player or someone that's returning after a while, but you'll get gold before too long. And the upkeep is incredibly reasonable. It's five silver. Okay, so I'm going to just show you guys. I'm going to buy it. Um, and now I can enter my in-room. So I'll enter, and this is going to be my apartment from now on. 
if I want to relinquish it, I can. I'll show you guys how to do that too. Okay, so this is my apartment, and what you'll notice is that you'll see my mouse has this icon, looks like a saw and a hammer. If I click it, if I right click it, it gives me the option to customize. So it gives me different options here. So I can do maple, I can do granite, I can do stucco, obsidian, or I can do bark. So I'm going to do, and of course it's going to give me a price that's going to cost me to upgrade that. And I will do, how about stucco? Okay, so then I will do, click on that and I will set it and see how it changes my wall there. So instead of the, the dingy boards, I now have a stucco wall. So, and this is the options for Freeport. The options for Kinos are a little bit different, but see, I've got all my surrounding walls there. Now I can also change the floor because I've got the icon down there too. And maybe for the floor, do we want to do um, obsidian? Let's go um, sandstone. Um, I could do maple, I could do tree bark, um, tree ent bark, I guess. Well, let's do that. I'll click on that. I'll set it. There we go. I've got nicer floors now, too. So you can play around with the different different options, see what you like. Uh, but usually you have to do like each room and even like these little panels, you would have to do separately, too. So like if I want to change up this room, I'll do something different. OK, so whereas I did stucco before, um, let's do, let's do granite, see how that differs. So I'll set that. Okay, so it gives me more kind of like a castle dungeon look, right? Okay, and then I'll do the floors. I'll do something other than the tree end. And, well, I already did the granite. Uh, we could do sandstone. That's something that we haven't tried yet. So I'll purchase it and I will set it. There we go. So and again, the options that you'll have for Kinos is different. I actually, so before I leave Freeport, I do want to give you guys an idea that, you know, the first homes that we looked at were that the apartments inside the inn, but there are nicer areas in Freeport that you can get homes at. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of the, the upper end housing here that we have in Freeport. So this is North Freeport off the docks, off the bell here is these homes along the waterfront are actually for sale too. Now these are going to cost more. Um, whereas the inn, you only had to pay the five silver a week upkeep for this here. It's going to cost you three platinum. Okay. It's also going to cost you uh, 15 gold a week for your upkeep. And there also is the addition of status here. So you have to, um, pay so much status up front, 250 status or 250,000 status for newer players. That's going to be a lot, but it's, if you really get into decorating and housing, this is something that might be a bit of a long-term goal. You also are going to need to be part of a guild and that guild's going to have to be at least level 30, which really, if you join an existing guild, isn't going to be a problem. You're also going to have a weekly status update. Now, um, you can buy the treasure hordes from the loyalty uh, merchants in either Freeport or Kinos, and they do sell you these little treasure hoards, like little treasure chests you can place in your house. It will cut up to one fourth of your coin, your weekly upkeep for your apartments. You can put four of them in there and it actually takes away all your weekly upkeep for the coin. It does diminish the status, but it is not enough to get rid of this 50,000 a week. Um, it does completely wipe out the 20,000 status uh, for my Maj Dual House, um, but not for these Freeport or Kinos ones. So I'm not gonna purchase this, but I am gonna tour it just to give you guys an idea. So not only is it location, 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 right? But the inside's much nicer. It's much larger. Um, you have more options as far as decorating goes. And the bigger, the nicer houses 
and all the cities will give you like a little outdoor area as well so this one I like it has a really cool um, like top roof area where you can go out and actually look across um, and see Freeport see the ocean it's very nice okay so and again there are four I think there's four different versions of this house so there are four different homes in Freeport along the street you can try each one the layout is going to be slightly different for the different houses so you might open up to a different room but it's the same number they're kind of all the same design just some you know some may be on the left or some may be on the right okay so I've got like a downstairs basement and then I've got an upstairs too so let's go hit the downstairs first and when you get if you get into decorating like I actually really enjoy it is if you don't like these things you can block them off um, you can get teleport pads from the city festivals um, to get to like hard to reach areas so you can block them off and then teleport in you know if things are kind of awkward or if you don't like the way it's set up so I think this little area could be a cute little atrium you know because it gives you up to the Sun but it's also can be a little awkward okay so let's go upstairs and check it out up there all right so again you've got this little platform here turn this into like this reminds me of like like the bonus room um, so here we have could be a bedroom it's got some cool wall nooks and again when you purchase this it's the same as the apartment I was showing you guys um, it'll do the little saw and hammer icon and you can click on the walls and for a certain amount of gold you can change them to the different things and there's like a little um, secret door here it will cost you more um, to, to do the the gold and all that just because there's so many more options and this is just a tiny tiny little room here kind of secret for hiding something you want to hide um, then I'll go up okay and this is going to be that roof that I was talking about but you've got this really nice roof area and if you go up to here you get this amazing view of the bay and again the other homes and um, there is a way to decorate and to actually break out of like if I try to jump right now I can't it won't let me walk out but there is a way to actually break out of these homes and to decorate down in these areas and actually in the city of Freeport within your instance so it's not officially like sanctioned by EQ2 um, but it's something that they know about and they haven't really fixed so you just have to be careful about how far out you go because you can eventually fall out through the through the world and the breakout is something I did in my module home and in one of my other videos um, I actually did show you guys my breakout area so I'm gonna give you guys a real quick tour of the housing in the different cities just to let you guys see the styles and kind of what's possible with each of these guys um, but I'm only going to go into kind of the nicest biggest house um, it's all going to be the same style it's all going to be the same walls and floors and the only thing that's going to change is of course the cost the weekly upkeep and the how many rooms and the layout so let's take a look at what Nariag has to offer for its houses um, and this is right now I'm in Death Grotto this is where a lot of the the really nice houses are there is the basic uh, starter house that's in a little bit different area of the city um, but that's the only thing there and that's the only option so we zone in right away you see we've got the kind of teal blue green floors we've got the pinkish walls and they're all gonna have the style we've got two rooms here right to begin so this is just standard We've got the same thing here only this gives us a doorway that we could go down into a basement and this has a large room and then another second room down here so this is the basement we've looked at the first floor and then we actually have upstairs too so this is like a three level home and we go up here we've got one small room 
we've got another small room but off of this we actually have a balcony so we get again like the the kind of top end uh, homes all have like this little outdoor area where you can at least look out and kind of see the city which I think is really nice and then here we just have the other doorway that takes us back down to the the first floor so that is your what your Narek home looks look like okay so here we are in the Gorwin housing section and the nice thing about Gorwin and I'd say it's very similar to the situation in New Hallis is that you have all your housing here but you also have a crafting section really nearby so it makes it super convenient to just pop out of your house and do some daily crafting if you want to um, probably only surpassed in convenience by uh, going to your guild for your crafting but let's take a look at the style that you get in Gorwin all right so again I am going to do a tour and the nice thing too is that you do not have to be a citizen of Gorwin or Nariag or Freeport to have a home in those cities as long as you're evil aligned you can purchase home in any one of those places or all three if you wanted to now if you're good aligned you can't however so if you're good aligned you are going to be able to do the same thing but in the good aligned city so if you are a citizen of Kinos you can have a home in Kinos you can have a home in Kelethan you can have a home in New Hallis. So the only city that really is truly neutral that either good or evil tune uh, lines can have a have a apartment or a house in it would be Majdol. So here we zone in and this is kind of your style of what you're going to get here in Gorwin. So again I'm looking at the kind of top tier house um, so let's do a quick tour and check out what we got here. So again there are other versions um, of this town of of these homes um, they're gonna have like the same type flooring the same type wall um, coverings but they're just gonna be smaller they're gonna have fewer rooms they won't have the outdoor area that this one does oh I didn't go downstairs let me go downstairs real quick Yo, they can be a little confusing. It's a, the bigger homes are kind of cool. They're a bit maze-like. They're not always set out, but I think it's neat how it kind of like works with the geography, right? It works with um, Gorwin's this big underground cave, so you get that in the kind of like architecture. And then if I want to go, I think this is the one I just. Here we go. So we're back at the front door, and then we can go out here again. A little cool garden area little covered porch which I think is very very nice like Gorwin I think is probably this home is one of my favorites so there we go and that's the Gorwin house so I'm also going to give you guys a quick tour of Kinos so again we'll do the top tier housing and the nice thing about the 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 very top tier housing in Kinos is that well, you're out here in front of the Concordium, right? But you also are right next to the housing portal. So this is where uh, you enter the prestige houses, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Um, but I do want to mention that, you know, Cat is evil aligned. So uh, she's 110. The guards here in Kinos don't give her any problems. I don't have to worry about running into anybody. But this is not something I would recommend for like a new lobby tune. Um, that's evil aligned. Kinos is going to be kind of dangerous, and the guards will kill you on sight if they see you. So watch out if you're a low level tune. You might want to consider, you know, if you're brand new, even free to play. Uh, like what I did when I first started was I rolled one evil aligned tune, which was cat, and then I rolled a good aligned tune just so I could see both sides of the story, check out all the different cities and all the different homes, um, if you guys want to, if that's something that appeals to you. So let's check out what a really nice house in Kinos looks like. 
so she won't be able to buy any of these but I can sneak in and visit other people's homes or tour these homes I do have good aligned tunes that have homes and kinos though I don't spend a lot of time here I just tend to to like the evil storylines in the evil cities better okay so here we are in the bottom floor and just like the Freeport ones if I own this I could change up the walls and they're actually like a really nice like kind of dark wood color and there's a basement and if you guys do like the haunted house stuff like during um, Nights of the Dead this should look really familiar Okay, and then there's an upstairs too. And there's this kind of little walkway around the edges if you wanted to. There's rooms here. Out here there's this really nice balcony that then gives you the look over at the library and at the pond and over the castle. And again, just like you could in Freeport, there is a way to do breakouts here. And you can actually go and like decorate all in that courtyard there. I don't think you can go very far past that gate though without like starting to kind of get to the area where you fall through the world. I've never tested how far it goes though. And then over here, and then we have upstairs to the attic. Okay, with I really love that ceiling. Um, the plot of dirt here is a little weird, but <laughs> It, it makes sense uh, for the Halloween um, Knights of the Dead quest that you get in this the same zone right well that was Kinos right now I'm in Raven's Roost in New Hallis and just like I mentioned with the Gorowin area is that here we have all our housing and there's even some guild halls in here just like in Gorowin um, but all in this one little section of New Hallis you have bankers you have um, brokers everybody kind of at your convenience with a little crafting area over here to my left back there you'll see there's kind of like a sewing loom back there um, but let's go in and check out New Hallis and see what their homes look like so I will tour Okay, so right when we come in, it's got a very kind of like lodgy winter feel to it because of course it's New Hallis. Um, but you've got this really wonderful room right when you walk in with the big bay window, right? Got this little area over here, which opens up to this fantastic deck. So, which I just love. I think this is beautiful. And um, again, you can do a breakout off this deck and you can actually go like it's hard to see from here but if you look down those are the docks of New Hallis down there below you so you can actually break out and build all the way down to the docks where the world bell is so we have a little closet in here we have a downstairs basement area Hey, we go back up. There's an upstairs too. A lot of really pretty windows in this house. We've got fireplaces. And the merchant, um, there is a merchant like um, in the housing area. It's the housing merchant basically. And she actually sells like uh, little um, logs and like uh, what's the little metal thing like in your fireplace? The little grate that the that the logs sit on um, she has she sells two versions of those uh, one has with flames one without so you can actually buy those to set into your fireplace so it looks like you've got a nice roaring little fire going right so this is a nice compact little home but super nice so here we are in Kelethan and on the outside, all of the Kelethan buildings and houses are all these like cute little uh, acorns. So it's 
it's adorable it fits perfectly with like the fae and the elves it's super confusing though and I, I usually get lost so that's the only downside to Galavan is it might be a little hard to navigate if you don't know the city pretty well um, lots of levels too so that helps it be confusing but the houses are really cool um, the the downside is that all the because they are like inside these acorns all the rooms are rounded so it does make it a little difficult sometimes to place furniture but you know sometimes the challenge can be part of the fun so and it's got these very pretty little like glass windows it's got this really serene and really pretty um, deck outdoor area you can't really see much unless you know build up a little bit to be able to look out but you see there's a city of great of Kelethan and greater fate arc I'm gonna run down here so that was right off like the front door there and then we come over to the other area here where you have both an upstairs and a downstairs. Downstairs, you've got a room, you've got two rooms off of that. So I think this is seven rooms it says, but most of the 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 kind of the top tier rooms are, are apartments are going to be, you know, six, seven rooms. And then a bedroom up here too. So that was just, it's a small area, it's not very spread out, but very cute, right? It works perfectly for the phase, but else too, so I like it. Like I mentioned earlier, the one city that you can purchase a house in, regardless of your alignment, is Majdul. Now that doesn't mean that you can just stroll in and automatically plunk down the silver or gold and get an apartment. You do have to work to earn a residency license in the city. So there are three factions in Majdul. You've got the three different courts, the Court of Coin, of Blades, and of Truth. Now it doesn't matter which one you pick, um, but you do have to earn at least, I think it's 40k faction um, with them to be able to have access to first their court. So right now I'm in the Court of Blades. Um, you have to be a friend and have to have done so many quests and earn so much faction to get in here. Um, but when you have their trust and you have enough, you can go to their court treasures merchant. And from here, you can actually purchase a residency license. So um, these will open up the more faction you gain with them. There is a basic one that entitles you to get a small single bedroom apartment within the city of Majdul. You have another one that lets you do a medium two bedroom one. And when you've got enough faction, you can purchase the affluent Majdul residency license. So this lets you have like a really large uh, three bedroom apartment basically the largest that you can get in there it doesn't cost very much to get it it's mostly the faction grinding to to become friends with this court and allow you to live in Majdol but good or evil uh, you just have to put a little work into it and you can live in Majdol too here we are at the affluent apartment in Majdol I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of this one too so I'll come over here to the door I'll hit tour. And I've had to switch to another tune to do this. Uh, Cat already has his apartment, so when I right click on the door, it actually doesn't give me an option to tour anything. So, and I want to give you guys the unfurnished, kind of basic apartment view. Though, if you do want to check out some of the module apartment that Cat has, I actually do uh, use it in one of my other videos. Okay, so here we go, we enter, we've got doors on all sides, I'll go here, I'll just go along the right. So it's got really pretty kind of um, sandstone and tile with the blue, looks very like Middle Eastern, very deserty. So we've got several rooms like that. But just like the nicest version of all these apartments in the city is there also is this just gorgeous outdoor deck. So it's a little plain here, but you get the coolest view. Like you get the sunrise, or is it sunset? I forget which one it is. Um, but the sun's actually over here. Right now it's got that dusk look to it. Okay, and then over here we have this like little um, market area and as you'll see like I'm blocked 
but if you do look at my video on like how to make plat you'll see that I've done the breakout section so I've taken the tents that were already there and I've blocked off that wall because you actually fall through the world if you try to go up those stairs um, but I've turned this into my sales home so I've got like my little market section down here which I use the teleport pads to get down to so there we have it there's the modular apartment So a question I get a lot of the time from new and returning players, especially when they, they join the guild, they always ask, well, how do I get to the guild? Or how do I get to my house? Like, um, what is the path I have to take? The, the nice thing is, as long as you're in a major city, so any of these cities, the houses that we've looked at so far, uh, Freeport, Gorwin, Nariac, Kinos, New Halas, Kelethan, or Maj Dole. If you want to get to your house or your guild for that matter, all you need to do is in chat type slash house. And it pulls up, and this is the same as like your little housing and leaderboards tab at the bottom, is that this pulls up all your houses as well as your guild. So all you would have to do is once you figure out where you want to go, if I want to go to my guild, I just have to click on it and click enter home. If I want to go to that inn that I bought earlier in the video, all I would have to do is click on cat's in room and hit enter. So what I want to show you guys, so this is going to be the last of the like in-game of no real world cash exchange, um, no no outside money this is all so far all I've shown you is all the stuff that you can get even as a free-to-play player so you don't have to be a member to get any of these you don't have to fork over any of your real-life cash this is all in-game stuff so far um, I want to finish showing you guys what you can do with this give you just a quick quick tutorial on how to play stuff um, how to relinquish a home maybe you start off with a two-bedroom apartment like this one is and you decide you want to upgrade to one of the nicer areas you want to give up your house how do you do that how do you pack up your stuff and then we'll move in the second part of the video to looking at the prestige houses so the nice thing about those is that although it will either cost you loyalty tokens um, and you do have to be a member to, to spend those on the houses or uh, your DBC they don't have the weekly upkeep that the apartments do. So that's the trade-off, right? Is you never have to worry about paying your rent or you're or not playing for a couple weeks and not having something paid up. With the prestige houses, they're always gonna be there. You never have to worry about a weekly rent. So real quick, I did purchase from a merchant a couple of really cheap uh, pieces of furniture just to show you guys how to place these, how you can move them around with like the editor real quick, and then I'll show you how I can pack them up and relinquish this house. So I go to my bags and I've got, well I will keep open the bag that has the items in it, but I'll close the rest of them just so I can kind of see what I'm doing. So I will place this. All I have to do is right click and it lets me place. I've got a bar stool too, so I will click and place. And I got a bookshelf. So not too bad startings of like an apartment. And again, I can move it around and you'll see like where it's okay to be placed. It's green, where it's not, it's red. So, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. So I've got these items placed. Now, when I'm in my house, there's uh, this menu pops up along the top, right? So it gives me the option I can leave house, I can get into a decorator mode, or I can open my house window. So let's go through these. I'm gonna skip the leave house because I wanna stay, obviously, and play around a little bit. I'm gonna look at enter and exit decorator mode. So when I do this, right, it's gonna notice that like if I'm not in decorator mode and I scroll over the bookcase, it doesn't light up, right? But if I click that button, now it does light up because if I click it now, it's gonna give me these options. So this is the editor mode. It's gonna let me scale it so I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. Uh, and if I want to go back to what it was originally, I just hit escape and it'll put it back automatically, okay? So if I want to roll it, and again, if I want to put it back to normal, I hit escape, right? I can twist it and turn it, and I can get out of it by hitting escape. I can 
adjust the pitch and I can hit escape. Okay, I can move it up, I can move it down. So if I want to sink something into the floor, maybe I don't like the legs on something, if I want to at raise something up, um, sometimes you have a hard time placing one item on top of another um, and you might need to raise it or lower it to make it look natural or to hide something you don't like about it. Um, that really is helpful, that function. Um, I can move it using editor 2 or just I can right click it and move it uh, and then I can also pick it up. Okay, So really helpful tool and all you have to do to get out is to hit that again and you can get really creative when using that too. A lot of times you'll find something that you know you like certain pieces of it you can kind of hide it in walls or whatever. Um, for housing I can open my housing window I can look at my history of, you know, I can pay up so many weeks in advance when it comes to houses, when it comes to guilds, I can look to see what my history is, I can look to see how many deposits I have. I can grant access to my house to other people, so I can set it so that, you know, I allow visitors in my house or, you know, I don't allow people to visit. Um, if I want to give trustee access um, to friends, if I want to use this as like a uh, group meeting place, like maybe we just formed a brand new guild and we don't have uh, a guild yet, we're not high enough level, if I want to give them access to things, I can put them here. And I can also look to see what my items are. So right now I only have three, right, in the whole house. And it lets me know they're all on the floor. So if you had a moving crate, you could pack stuff up and hide that in a corner and then get stuff out of there whenever need be. I find that's really helpful like if you like to decorate for the different holidays and then you can pack them in your moving crate when you're done with them because it's basically unlimited storage and you don't have to take up like um, like your vault spaces because that's the other thing here is from from this window you can leave the house you can pay your upkeep and you can also access your house vault. So and now your vault uh, you do not get a different six slot vault for each house you own. It's one vault for any house, no matter how many you have that you own. So my vault is going to be full because even though I just bought this house, because the vault from my other homes are full. Okay, and then down here we can save the layout. So say you get done decorating, you think this is really cool, um, but maybe you're switching servers or maybe you're afraid that, you know, something's going to happen. Um, you can save it. If you want to like um, move to a different place, you can save the layout too. Sometimes uh, this here is going to be like pick up an item, pack your contents. So if I wanted to, um, I want to relinquish this house, right? I don't want to keep it. Um, I'm moving up to a bigger, better one. I can click this here, pack my contents. So do I want to move them all to a moving crate? Yes, I do. Okay. And what you'll notice, usually the moving crate is by the door. Yep, there it is, right there. Okay, and then the last option it gives me here is if I want to publish my house, publish or unpublish. So we talked a little bit about this before, but on the housing and leaderboards, people can publish their decorated homes and you go under ratings, you can go visit other people's homes and check out their decorations. They're really cool. I think I will do a video just to give you guys an idea of what can be done and we'll look at like some of the befores and afters of some of the places that are decorated because some of the creativity and the talent is just kind of really mind-blowing with people that what they can do with this game. I think of all the all the things for EQ2, like it's a 15 year old game, it's been around forever, and a lot of people have differing opinions, like what's good, what's bad about the current game versus the original. I think everyone can agree though that where the game has really held up and is really just awesome and continues to be, um, not so much the adventuring side, I don't think, uh, but definitely when it comes to crafting and decorating especially is that the game is just still top-notch when it comes to that. So definitely check out, you know, all these people on the that have published their homes because they're they're pretty amazing to see what they can do. Okay, so there's my moving crate. Now if I want to relinquish my house, I have to go outside. 
right? You can't do this from inside. It doesn't pop up the option to, to relinquish the house. But once you zone out and you're looking at the door, you can click on it. Or actually, no, what you want to do is you want to pull up from here. Okay, so I am looking at my door. I've got it open, right, to my housing and leaderboards. I've got the right home marked, so my in-room. It's going to be an option to pay upkeep or I can move my items. So if I hadn't already packed them, it would give me another option to whether I wanted to pack up my items. So I'm going to move them. It's going to say, which house do you want to move them to? Well, let's go to my Mara estate, okay? So if things are moved. I'll go back to my in-room and now because the house is empty it's going to give me the option to relinquish the home which I will do. Now I have to type my character's name just because they want me to be really sure that I want to relinquish this and I do. So there we go. I no longer own that apartment. It's off my list of homes that I own. Okay, So that is how you pack up and move your apartment. Let's turn to the prestige housing now. So the biggest selection uh, that you'll find for prestige housing is of course gonna be on the marketplace. So if you open up your marketplace, go to the housing tab and prestige housing, you'll see here that we have deeds for DBC. So you do need to have a deed before you can purchase the house. So we looked at the housing portal in Kinos. Here it is for Freeport. But once you come here, if you have a deed, you can then purchase a house. Now, to purchase it though, it's going to be zero copper for price, zero copper for upkeep. Because that deed is basically you're living rent free. This is something that you own that will never get taken away. Right. So the nice part about that is that if it's a sales house or if maybe you haven't played for a while and you're coming back, you don't have to worry about things like rent. So it's just indefinitely open to you. Um, but you do need to have this deed and you do need to have scribed it. And just like the front door of a lot of the the instance housing, the in-game stuff that you can get even as a free-to-play player, if you right click on this, it gives you other options. So it's giving me access and enter options because I do have homes on this tune available through the portal, but I can also tour. And then it pulls up all the list of all the prestige homes that I could want to tour. So if you're thinking of getting a prestige, prestige home, I absolutely suggest that you guys go ahead and do like a full tour before you buy anything, before you put down any DBC, or before you use up a good chunk of loyalty tokens, and just see what it looks like. You might also want to visit a few other of these homes just to give you some ideas for decorating if you're interested in that too. The other thing we have to here is you'll notice it says get portal object. So what do they mean by portal object? Is that you can actually place portals in your other homes that let you transport directly into your prestige homes. So you can get that by right clicking there. But also like Kat has on this tune, she has two prestige homes. She has the Isle of Refuge, she has the Mara Estate. So if I wanted to get additional portals, um, I believe when you first get it, I think you automatically get one, or maybe it's none, I, f I forget, it's been a while. Um, but I can actually check on that in a minute. I, I do, I am owed a prestige home. I think I'll grab that for you guys and show you how to do it. But if I wanna get additional portals, all I have to do is click that. And what it does is it automatically then puts in my bag one of these portals so I can place that in any of my apartments so that I can have this really easy you know I can just jump from home to home to home um, with these portals so that only works for prestige homes is what you'll notice is on their Maj dual home there is no portal okay so there are other ways to get prestige housing if you don't want to spend the DBC and you're hoping just to do it with your in-game means, as long as you are a member, then you can get houses with loyalty tokens or by doing the Panda Quest. So one way to get a house then would be to see this loyalty merchant. So Noble Tig Rule, 
and he has the same name whether you're in Kinos or Freeport, so you can always ask a guard and have them send you to him. Or actually, I guess it's uh, Noble Targ Validus. I know for sure has the same name. I think they're all pretty much the same names in the different cities, and they're always like together in a group. So find your loyalty realtor, and you'll notice that he has like a blood written contract. So, and this is for the Crags Mismore estate. And this is also something that came with with the uh, rewards claims. So if you've been uh, had an account with EverQuest 2 for, I think it was either the the sixth or the seventh year rewards for the Craig's Mismore State, then you can go to your slash claims. You can look at your claims items. You might have like a sixth or seventh um, your rewards pack for veterans and it will have the Craig's Miss Morris state in there as well if you're I believe it was either the 10th or the 11th year had the Isle of Refuge so you may have some of these estates waiting for you already in your claims but here he's got a blood run contract which gives me Craig's Miss Moore he's also got a few others though it's not just the one so he does have one so for the Skyblade skiff deed of ownership that's another prestige home and he does have the Kromzek one, I believe, too. Which is a very cool one as well. There we go. So here's the luxurious Kromzek keep or deed of ownership. So I could purchase that with 60 loyalty points, tokens. And I take that deed up to the, to the portal to get into prestige housing. There are a couple of prestige homes available through questing or achievements. So probably the biggest one is gonna be the Summer Panda event. So if you come out to Sundered Frontier, just by the spire here, you'll find Yunzi, the great traveler, and his little friend Pashio, uh, carrier of things. And Yunzi has these exploration quests. He gives them out every summer. So there's a 2017 version, there's a 2018 version, as they've been doing this for the last two summers. Hopefully they'll do it again this summer as well for 2019. But if you do his quest, then you can come over to Pashu and he has a whole litany of things that he will sell you. It's all for zero copper, so you don't actually have to pay anything. You don't need to, any coin to get it. Uh, some of the stuff here, you'll see Cat has everything available because she's 110. Lower level tunes won't see all the gear, but they will get like all the housing items. They may not get the mount, um, but they will be able to get these ownership deeds. So there's one for the Relic Tinker Prestige House, and then there's one for the Mara Estate. So the Mara Estate is very cool. If you guys have been to the Isle of Mara, that zone, it has quests, you know, it's a normal in-game zone. It, it's basically the entire estate that they give you. So it's a smaller zone, uh, but it's a huge house. It's very cool. Uh, lots of options to decorate it. Uh, Kat here hasn't claimed her Relic Prestige House, so I'm going to go ahead and get that. And I have the deed here in my bag already, so what you want to do is when you get the deed, is right click, you're going to want to redeem it. Okay, and then it's going to say, uh, well, for this I've already done this, um, but I haven't claimed it yet. So, but that those are the steps you want to take. And there is one other house that you guys ha could have gotten during the Chrono Portals event. So it came with an achievement. If you did all of the dungeons during that event, then you got a special deed to claim one of the houses. So I did do that on one of my tunes. All right, I'm back at the housing portal here in Freeport. I've claimed my deed. So now it's time to buy my tinkered house. So all I have to do is click and it'll give me the list of all the possible prestige houses and I just scroll down till I see the tinkered one so you can see I get the little asterisk there because I already own that on this tune uh, she already owns the Mara estate and I go all the way down to Oop, did I not see it? did I go past it? what's it? the exact name of it Relic Tinker Prestige House Okay, so here we go. Relic Tinkered Prestige Portal. So if I want to access it, it's going to ask me then to purchase it, but for zero copper, I buy it, 
and then there we go now it is added to my list of homes so I can get a portal for that it does give me the option to relinquish it but I mean why would why would I want to I don't have to pay rent on it I can get additional portals if I want to so there I've got two for my relic tinker estate yeah two of those and then if I want to access it you know I can either click on it and access it or I can just do from my regular slash house my tinkered relic just from any major city I can enter the home so in this one like I said it's a free one as long as you remember and from doing those quests it's not one of my favorite prestige houses it's a little bit plain but if you're going for like a really kind of industrial look or if you have special plans for it to decorate it as maybe like a warehouse or a workshop or just want to use it as storage then it makes for a pretty good home now if you guys are interested in seeing me do some videos on showing different prestige houses um, I think a cool idea would be to kind of a to do like a before and after like show you guys kind of what the the home looks like empty and blank you know kind of like this blank slate and then to show you a couple different options of how people have decorated it so if you guys want to see that let me know in the comments um, and I will be happy to oblige. Right? Thank you guys for watching.